Jeff Reason. Parang, ba, parang hindi mo, ano, parang sasabi ko ba, suspicious naman ng mga pastors dito pag binakita ba silang mag-garage, mag-garage ng automatic na ginagawa mo. Diba? Parang may ganun silang inibisa. Pero, ilang sa lockdown days, ang mga kabataan na nag-confess, ayun ang kasalanan ng labi sila. Kaya, ibig sabihin, ito yung parang nag-strike sa akin na recently, meron tayong kinaharap na gano'ng case, di ba? And so, can you blame us? Or let's say, for example, hindi, niyo, hindi kayo magsasubmit, di ba? Doon sa sanctification na alam natin dapat daanan. Or gusto niyo parang yung matanggit sa church na to, sige. Pero, I should select, di ba, sa mga taong tututok, sa mga taong tatay sa tututok, hindi ba dapat salain talaga natin? Payag ba kayo? na may mga tatayo dito sa pulpito and living in sin sila. They are committing sexual immoralities. Diba? At sa akin na walang ibang solusyon dito is either magpakasal sila o maghiwalay sila, i-abandon talaga nila yung kasalanan nila. Because uh, whether, you, whether you believe it or not, ang sinabi ng salita ng Diyos, those people na nagpapamit ng fornication, adultery, hindi yan pumunta sa namin. Impiyan sila. And, panawalan mo sa mga kabataan dito, payag ba kayo ngayon kayo ka-close tapos malalaman yung in the future meron na punta sa interno? Diba? This should be forbidden ngayon pa lang. Wala rin namang ibang magtutungo nito, diba? Kung di sa church din. And ayun yung talaga, ano, hindi kami suspicious. Kaya lang, most likely, majority ng mga cases, diba, na, na, na na-witness namin, eto yung naging problema at kung bakit hindi sila makapag-hingod sa Panginoon. Because na doon yung guilt feeling. And to the point na most of them departed from faith. Kaya kung hindi natin aagapan to at iniisip nyo normalize ko sa society, hindi kasi, di ba? Uh, always uh, remember na yung friend na talaga ng Panginoon. Ang pinamis niya, sabi ko nga, kung nag-aim yung mga tao dito ng pakasalan sila, di ba? Pag-prepare nila yung sarili nila para pakasalan sila ng tao na nalang nila. What is the point na makaranas ka ng sobrang bonggang kasalan dito sa mundo na ako? Pero, ang usapan sa namin, di ba? Hindi lahat ng church ikakasal ng Christo. Would you miss that? Di ba? And, uh, kung, kung talagang paninibigan lang natin yung salita ng Diyos, alam niyo ano, uh, ang tindi ng holiness na nire-require nito. That is why if if you are really not broken for the gospel, di ba? Sad to say, parang dumating na ako sa ganun po, na uh, meron na akong sinilang dito na, uh, di ba, sa Matthew 16, 26, for what is a man, uh, for what is a man profited, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Uh, yung, is there anyone, meron bang babae, meron bang lalaki, meron bang job position, meron bang business, meron bang kayamanan or possession, or anything else na karapat na dapat, parang mawala, di ba? Para ilayo sila sa pananampalataya sa Panginoon Jesus. And what I'm trying to say is, uh, for the meantime, ang ikilang buhay sa mundo na to, kasama mo lagi yung taong gusto mo. Pero, di ba, parang yung tao na to na lagi niyang kinaadigan, o yung tao na to na, ano, parang feel niya, na-enjoy niya most of his or her life, kasama yung taong kinalihibangan niya. Pero, karapat dapat ba yung tao na yun para magpunta siya sa impyerno? Diba? Try to think about it, diba? Meron bang tao, meron bang lalaki o babae na karapat dapat sa buhay ng ayos sino sa amin, diba? Para sa yamin ng kaluluwa ng isang tao. Kaya, uh, even kung ipinagpalit yung pananampalataya para sa kayamanan o para magkaroon ng promotion o or, or, or ano man, diba? Na anything that they wanted in life to be actualized, that yun, diba? is in vain. Because, um, ayun nga, yung babasahin natin all together mga kaya. Okay? Babasahin ko, makibasa lang kayo ng pag-ingin. Pero, uh, 
ever since I have read, ilang beses ko na kasi hindi nabasa yung article na yun. And uh, siguro kapag hindi mo siya specifically na detail na parang ano, hindi, hindi mo kumpleto yung pagkatrendol na ano, ng mga tao. So, gigisingin ko lang din kayo ang kung sa bawin mo. Jesus is worthy of all our time and our life. At lahat ng mga naiisip ng mga tao na gusto pa niyang i-fulfill sa buhay at mapapalayo lang sa Panginoon, lahat yun ay walang say-say. Um, I'm, I'm asking a question sa Panginoon, kung hindi naman lahat ng tao sa church ay magiging tapat na tagapakinig at tagasunod, bakit kailangan pa rin pangaral ang salita ng Diyos? And I don't know bakit ito yung nakuha kong mensahe, but God is after those who will listen and obey. I may, after this message, hindi man 100%. Pag palagay natin, hindi 100% talaga, 100% susunod yung mga tayo. Pero ang hinahalap kasi ng Panginoon dito, meron kasi susunod. Diba? So, ikaw yung pinapakalala para sa itong mensahe. Ikaw na susunod sa Panginoon para mas after sa iyo ang Panginoon. And then, uh, in Isaiah 66 verse 2, for all, Ito you know, ba? Isaiah 66 verse 2. For all these things has my hand made, and so all these things came to me, says the Lord. But to this man will I look even to him with for and of a contrite spirit, and he trembles. Who trembles at my word? Masayin ko sa Tagalog. Kahatulan ni Yahweh ang mga bansa, ito ang sinabi ni Yahweh. Ang aking trono ay, uh, ay ang kalangitan at ang daigdig ang aking tuntungan. Anong klaseng bahay ang gagawin mo para sa akin? Anong klaseng lugar ang aking titirhan sa lahat ng bagay ako ang naibigan? Kaya ako ang may-ari ng lahat ng ito, ako'y nalulugod sa mga taong mapagpakumbaba at nagsisipagsisi sa mga may takot at sa utos ko'y sumusunod. Ginagawa ng tao ang kanyang maibigan at matutuwa pang gumawa ng kasamahan. Para sa kanya ay walang kaibahan ang handog na toro o kaya ay tao. Ang handog na tupa o patay na aso, ang handog na pagkain, butil o dugo ng bagoy, ang pagsusunog ng insenso o pagdarasal sa Diyos Diyosan. Natutuwa sila sa nakakahiyang pagsamba dahil dito ipaparanas ko sa kanila kapahamaka kinatatakot na nila sapagkat nang ako'y tumawag, walang tumugod kahit na isa. Nang ako'y magsalita, walang gustong makinig. Ginusto pa nila ang sumuway sa akin at gumawa ng masama. And actually, as I reflect upon these verses, please say, Lord, so okay kami ng so okay, ilang oras kami nag-isay sa presence mo, Lord, nakat ka, ano parang hindi ba nababago yung buhay ng mga tao? And uh, for that reason, I do believe God accepts our worship. Pero kung hindi nagre-repent yung puso ng mga tao, kahit 24 hours pa silang mag-worship, hindi kasi yung tatanggapin ng Panginoon. Okay, kaya sa bagay na to, I, I, I really want to emphasize na saan ba talaga tayo? Are, are we really in Godly sorrow? O nandun lang sa part na tuwing mauhuli sa kasalanan, dun lang magpapakita ng pagsisisa. Um, I remember, uh, hindi ko alam ba kailangan kong daanan ko. Parang meron ko sa mga nakitang preaching ko sa deception of suicide. Pero hindi ko pa talaga siya nagpapagawad. Uh, gusto ko lang mag-emphasize na meron, meron kasi akong sinalaw na ano, parang American blogger. Christian American blogger. Tapos silang popol, uh, ang deep nila, sila yung magkarelasyon na pinapromote nila hindi sila, wala silang kissing, ganyan. Uh, modest sila man ang eh, gano'n. As in, ano sila, more of holiness. And suddenly, biglang meron, ano, may post yung babae. Sabi, yung sa post ng babae, sabi niya, ano, parang, ang content, ah, summarize ko nilang yung content ng post mo. Parang, namatayan siya ng loved one. Tapos, ano, uh, bago kasi nangyari yung nag-post na nang namatayan siya ng loved one, hindi, ko, hindi ako follower ng relasyon niya. Pero, inisip ko, kung, may mga po ba akong detail yung sabon? Kaya niya ganyan, so kung nata ko niya sa wala. Ang huling post ng lalaki, pa, ang update niya sa buhay niya, hiwalay na sila. Kung gusto niyo kong sisa, si Hannah Williamson. Yan. So, parang kasama-sama din ngayon nila Pastor Alan Dillo. Tapos ayun, may type, may reference niya tayo yung boyfriend niya. Ngayon, parang ganyan yung life update. Tapos, nalaman ko, 
sa mga comments, ang sabi doon, nag-suicide siya, parang gano'n. So, parang nung, nung after nilang mag-iwalay, ano, mag parang after doon ang married prayers and fasting na pag-decision na pag ng doon nilang mag-iwalay. Tapos, alam mo sabi, yung, yung Mike Evans pala, mas kong pala siya. Tapos, ano, ah, uh, hindi, walang ano, walang sinabi niya ni Reason, pero ayun nga, ang paliwala sa isang article, nagpangamatay pa lang siya. Parang inisip ko, ba, paano nangyari na, ano to, mga malalalim na Christian na to, pero na ano, nagkaroon ng deception sa suicide. And ang um, uh, kaya kong dinidetail to, kasi yung tungkol nga, parang may sinasabi kasi yung post ni Hannah Williamson, which is, I don't want to judge, I don't want to uh, magbigay ng verdict sa bagay na to. Pero ang point ko lang, kung meron akong knowledge sa Bible na, let's say for example, si Kingston, he was once anointed by God. Siya pa nga yung unang hari, di ba? And then, si Judas, di ba? Disciple din ni Jesus. Pero, ang paras na story na nagsuicide. Ngayon, parang medyo matatakot ako sa Amerika. Parang sinasabi nila na yung mga pastor na nagsuicide is nasa langit. Parang feeling ko, pag ganun yung kinakampay nila, hindi kaya magiging invitation yun para sa iba na takusin yung buhay nila. Kasi ay yung mga Christian na nagsisuicide, nagpupunta naman para sa mga. If you understand what I'm saying. Pero kung hindi natin sa scripture, dalawang beses na nagpakamatay, wala sila sa TV ng pangyayon. Kaya I don't want to make any verdict sa mga sabagay na to. But then, uh, merong isang supernatural na story na bago siya nagpapakamatay, sabi niya, parang nag-try out siya sa pangyayon, parang, pero patawarin mo ako, parang gula siya, binaril niya yung sarili niya. Tapos, pag, parang nung nagkaroon siya ng diwa, nasa interno na siya. Pero, bin, ano, dahil sa last word niya na humingi siya ng tawad, parang pinaranas mo na sa kanya yung interno hanggang sa belief up siya ng Panginoon. Pero nabuhay pa siya. Ibig sabihin, nagkaroon ng chance. Kaya, ang hindi ko alam, kung anong story ng mga talagang they end up their life. Tapos may preaching tungkol sa deception of suicide. So, hindi natin ina-encourage ang bagay na ito. Kasi, can anyone of us guarantee, di ba? Pag, pag inaprobahan nila yung mga tao, sure ba talaga sila? May mga tao na si suicide na pagkakas sa mga 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 sa so part na, cast me not away from your presence, for take not your Holy Spirit from me. The Lord, huwag dumaya sa akin ang balang ng Spirit ko. Kasi nga nakita niya sa buhay ni King Saul, after dayasa ng balang ng Spirit ko, lahat ng ginagawa ng balang ko. So, hari pa siya, pero wala na yung presence ng Panginoon sa buhay niya. Kaya, ito yung pinakaingatan natin. Let us make sure that the way we repent ay talagang tulay na pagsisisi. Uh, Bumayalat tayo sa Panginoon upang humingi ng kapatawaran sa lahat ng ating mga kasayaman. Uh, what is the point of having 10 friends if you only have one new friend within your circle? What is the point of having a big congregation when there are few who are true in obeying the Lord? Ito, katulad na lang sinasabi ko na uh, Alam ko na lang din, uh, I, I remember sa VCF, napadpad kami doon uh, once in our lives. And then, ang rule nila is kapag meron silang mga church members na couples, hanggang six months lang tapos ipapakasal nila. Because they believe, di ba, pag ilagpas pa doon, alam na nila mahuhulog na sa kasalanan. You know, ato, uh, especially sa lifestyle ng mga kayayaman, di ba? pwede may mga kaglaming yun sila, mas, mad mas madalas yung magiging sila lang ang magkasama, ganyan. And then, uh, bakit nga ba hindi tayo against the relationship as long ang uh, willing tayong mag-asawa, willing na kayong mag-asa, di ba? Because that is biblical. If you truly want to become uh, acceptable sa Panginoon, the greatest, ang sabi, the greatest lesson for, the hardest lesson for discipleship is marriage. Sabi nga natin yun, the hardest lesson for the family is married. So, ibig sabihin, coming from Paul Washer, 
sinig sabihin, ayan yung invitation ko sa lahat ng mga mag-aasawa, o oh, sa mga mag-asawa na. You know, may hardest lesson learned for discipleship because uh, you are dealing with lives, especially kapag nagkaroon na ng mga anak mo. No? Dapat mag-maintain na lahat yun ay under the discipleship of Jesus Christ. And um, whether, ano, ayun nga, maniwala kayo sa hindi, ayun talaga ang same standard ng Panginoon. Hindi yan nagbabago. Kung sasabihin ang old-fashioned naman ng mga pinaniniwalaan dito, eh bakit nakakaligtas ba yung new fashion nyo, di ba? So, ang point nito, di ba, still, we believe in the old rabbit cross. Na, ayun pa rin, di ba, hindi nagbabago yung holiness ng Panginoon, yung righteousness niya, hindi na nagbabago. I would like to ask the young people in this church, how would you counsel those who are younger than you? Diba? Naalala ko nung sa mga older batch nun, kapag nakikita nila yung mga younger batch na may relasyon, naiiling sila, diba? Pero gawain din naman nila. Parang pag inisip ko, ayaw nila yung pagkakamali nila, makita nila dun sa younger batch, pero sila talaga, mga gano'n. So, pero uh, ito nga, may binanggit si Oswald Chambers, sabi niya, the only thing that exceeds right, uh, the only thing that exceeds right doing is right being. Amen po ba? So, kasi, uh, sa mga Pharisees, sabi ng, sabi ng Bible, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Oo, you think ko? Except your right, Matthew 5, 20, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ang sabi sa atin ng Panginoon, kailangan mag-exceed yung righteousness niya sa right doing ng mga Pharisees, ng mga scribes. At ayun na, ano yung right being? When our being is, di ba, the being of Jesus Christ. Di ba? To be a Christian is to be like Christ. Uh, sabi din sa, my atmosphere is highest, if you are my disciple, you must be right not only in your living, but in your motives, in your dreams, in the recesses of your mind, you must be so pure in your motives that God Almighty can see nothing to censure. Who can stand in the eternal light of God and have nothing for God to censure. Only the Son of God and Jesus Christ claims that by His redemption we can put into any man His own disposition and make Him as... Ano ito? Meron mga word na ano? Siguro ito ang sanifat at as nagulang dito ay as simple as a child of God. The purity which God demands is impossible unless I can be remain with Him. And that is what Jesus has undertaken to do by His redemption. No man can make himself pure by obeying laws. Jesus Christ does not give us laws and uh, rules and regulations. His teachings are truths that can only be interpreted by the disposition he puts in the great uh, marvel of Jesus Christ's salvation is that He alters heredity. He does not alter human nature. He alters His mainspring. So, kaya nga, deep within sa buhay natin, ayun yung binabago ng Panginoon para magpanifest din yung uh, being of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pakay ano nga yung judgment has to take place? So, the judgment has to take place even when there are intercessors, God has to do what He has said. So, ano masasabi niyo sa mga verse na ito? Ah, pakadasa po. Okay. Ano yan? Jeremiah 15, verse 1. Yes. So, sabi dyan, kahit mag-stand in the gap si Moses ha, si Sandra, di ba? Na hindi, parang sa isang din, hindi mapapakinggan. Ezekiel 14, 14. Tapos, verse 20. Imagine, there are times
times na ang mga intercessors, pwede sa nang mag-stand even in the back para hindi mangyari yung judgment sa mga tao. Pero meron din hanggang na, di ba? Na kahit meron ng mga Bible characters na nagpe-pray, hindi na makakainda ng Panginoon. Isasave lang na yung mga nagpe-pray, pero yung ano, yung judgment, mangyayari na. na. Kaya doon natin maintindihan yung righteousness ng Panginoon. That God is the God of justice. At meron pala ng kaakibat na judgment. Diba? Kapag, ano na, dumating na sa turning point ng news na to, sa dispensation ng Panginoon, ano na, hangganan na. So, let this be a warning to all of us. Uh, so, kung tawag na tayo dun sa talagang de-deliver. Sige, pakit ka naman na yun, tungkol kay, ano pa nga yun? Si Doktor, hindi ko alam kung ilan na sa inyo yung nakabasa nito. Pero maganda kasi, sabay-sabay natin aralin itong message na ito. Korean pastor sees heaven and hell. Tapos ang question niya, do only one in 1,000 make it to heaven. Yan, heaven and hell. According to sa, ano, siguro yung nag-post yun sa website, sabi niya, this testimony of heaven and hell is a very powerful one. Uh, it will teach you to be happy to serve the Lord in purity of heart without receiving much recognition here on earth. It will encourage you to, uh, you to live a holy life that confirms the teaching uh, of, of this website that it is enough to have the kind of belief in Jesus that doesn't include or lead to repenting and turning away from your sins. Every testimony I have heard about heaven and hell mentions the fact that there are Christians in hell. Okay, pay attention to I don't. Uh, maraming nagsasabi nga ng may testimony, di ba? Uh, sabi niya dyan, every testimony nga eh, ng heaven and hell, may nakita silang mga Christianos in Pernod. So let's take the words of Jesus seriously because Jesus spoke about this plainly in the Gospels as well. If only we are willing to accept it as it is written, if so, we cannot take these reports as gospel. We do not know for sure if the person mentioned really had the experience claim we should judge all things by the word of God and let the word of God itself judge our lives. So, ayan. Uh, ang title na to, A Thousand to One, Reverend Park Yong View. Ayan. In 1987, Reverend Park had died from high blood pressure. But by the grace of God, his life was extended for another 20 years. However, for the first four years, he was not able to speak due to his condition. He was about 50 years old when he had come back to life. During his death, the Lord showed him uh, to, have a, to have an account. I want you to know if you are arrogant and prideful, uh, you, you will be uh, bring curses upon yourself. I had a mega church of 5,000 members, but I was struck down by God due to my arrogance. Now I fear God. So you humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. I used to own property worth about 150 million US dollars. I owned five luxury cars, but after my death experience, I gave it all away. Please remember, salvation cannot be achieved by your possessions, but through faith, and now I plead to the deacons, elders, and other leaders in their churches to serve their pastors with all your heart. So, ito na. Diba? Imagine nyo, 150 million US dollars. Um, kaya ba na meron siya. But on December 19, 1987, after I had finished my lunch and while I was resting, I began to feel excruciating pain. It was so unbearable that I felt as though I was going to die. And I lost consciousness. I woke up four months later. Ayan, tapos, sabi niya, vegetated, stayed, and my doctor, ay sabi niya, okay, so, ano natin, parang mamatay na siya dyan. Ayan, but, tapos, nung namatay siya, ayan, Sabi niya, nakakita siya ng dalawang tao sa room, pero angels actually yun. So, we are angels descended from heaven, we are from God's kingdom, a brilliant light shine from the angels. So, ay, ay pinanong pala niya niya yun, sino sila? Pero yung sabi, the angel to my right introduced himself, I ran errand for Jesus' kingdom. Jesus called me and commanded me to go down to the earth. He commanded me to take you to heaven. You are you are dead. But since your family cries out, ngayon, naalala ko, kapag meron daw kami na umiiyak, yun, parang nire-revive yung ano, yung, yung taong pinag-pray nila. And then, but for now, he desires 
Uh, he desires to grant you a little more time to me, but for now, he desires to show you heaven and hell. He will show you and you will witness to the people of the earth, may the number of people who end up in hell. Ang purpose nito, ng, ng testimony na to ay kumunti ang pupunta sa impyano at dumami ang pupunta sa langit. This will be your mission. God instructed us to tell you today, uh, not to delay. If you delay, you will not be able to visit heaven and hell. Tapos sabi dyan, then the agent to my left said, the moment you were born, and until the moment you had died, I had been with you at the time. I did not understand what the angel had meant. Now I know, he was my guardian angel, so I said, I cannot go. I will not go, I am a pastor. I cannot meet the Lord in this physical condition. Ang pinapain na dito, parang, ay, ano, ayaw nyo mara ko sa Panginoon na parang, ano, detailin yung pangangatawan niya. Pero ayun nga, sabi, how am, I, how am I able to enter heaven? I am so scared. Please go back to heaven and ask the Lord to heal me. Then come back and take me to heaven through my dream. Please ask for mercy on my behalf. Yeah, so, but the angels were not listening to my arguments. They took uh, my clothes uh, off and said that they were too filthy to be wearing in heaven. Then uh, they then clothed me in a white gown. They grabbed my hands and we flew straight up to heaven. We flew through the clouds and as I looked down, I saw the earth becoming smaller. They let me go near an endless golden street. I saw a brilliant shining light, too bright to look directly at it. I said, where is the light coming from? It is from heaven. The angel responded. I thought, wow, it is huge. <laughs> I had a expression. Wow, it is huge. And I saw groups of people in white. I don't know if I'm going to say that. I don't know if I'm going to Ang gusto ko sa'yo kami kaso, yung ano eh, paikulin mo lang sa'yo. Kasi kaya yung gusto ko ng tingin ko kasi yung nakabilit ko sa pagdilin. Okay, so ayan. And then, ayan, so ganyan tayo sa wow. Bakit kayo naman sa akin, wow? I saw, it is huge, yeah. I saw groups of people in white gowns flying ahead. Who are they? I asked. The angel replied, they are the ones who have served God faithfully and trusted in Jesus by obeying and following the need of the Holy Spirit with all their heart. Their bodies are dead on earth, they are now the souls heading toward heaven. And so, uh, FYI, di ba nga, kaya yung mga saints sa langit, merong pa rin sila kasi yung katawan nga nila nandito sa mundo. So, kaya hindi na yung rapture para mag-vocus by the way. The other angel continued, there are 12 gates in heaven. When a saved soul comes to heaven, they must enter through one of those gates. We were standing in the south gate, but it was closed. As we were waiting, I asked the angels, uh, the angel, angels, why is this gate not opening? So, medyo barang yung English po kasi Koreano to, di ba? Yeah. The angel replied, it's because you are not singing the heavenly worship song. Sound another form. So, at I will enter his gates with my seating in our hearts and enter his courts with praise. Yeah. I asked angels, I was very prideful and arrogant in a service of I was cursed with sickness and I am not good at singing earthly worship, singing earthly worship songs. How am I able to sing heavenly worship songs when I have never heard it before? The angel replied, you are correct, but you must still prepare yourself to worship. So, ang nangyari dito, Pumanta yung mga angels, sumabay siya, tapos bumuha sa yung game. O, ayun na yun. And we entered in. The scene of heaven was indescribable. I can't describe heaven with my earthly words. I said, Lord, thank you so much. Even though I was very prideful and arrogant and cursed with a sickness, you have still brought me to heaven to show me around. I can hear the voice of God, my beloved pastor part. Young view, I welcome you. You have made a long journey uh, here. And his voice was overflowing uh, with love and tenderness. And I replied back, crying in tears, Lord, the angels immediately said, You have been a pastor for 20 years. Do you not know your scripture? Nakakawa, di ba? 20 years ng pastor, di ba ba alam yung sinabi sa Bible na walang tears sa langit? Please stop it. I was not even able to cry. Ay, wala pa lang iyakan, di ba? Okay, so, ito na. Guys, pakinamorize kong tatlo. Limang tanong, ha? At para i-ready na natin yung sarili natin sa limang tanong ng Panginoon sa atin. The Lord then asked me five questions. How much time did you spend reading the Word? 
pagsagot. <laughs> Sige. Uh, isa yan sa tagdaan natin na, na itatanong sa atin ng Panginoon, how much time did you spend reading the Word? Ang pangalawang tinanong ng Panginoon, how much did you give of offerings? So, labot na dyan. No? May mga doktorates daw kasi, pero may mga hindi nag-offering. How many times have you evangelized to people? Ito yung, ano, hindi ko ng tawag sa Panginoon. No? And then, did you type properly? Ayan, so, tatanong pa lang ang Panginoon talaga sa langit yung types and offering. And how much time did you spend in prayer? Pag sabihin na natin, uh, Okay, so ready na ba kayo sa mga tanong? Kaya, binigay ko na sa inyo yung clue. Yeah, I could not answer the fifth question. The Lord rebuked me for the fifth question. After you had become a mega church pastor, you had become very lazy with prayer. Being busy is no excuse to me. I had to repent of the prayer. The angels will show you many places in heaven and of hell. Look around as much as you desire. You will live after witnessing many different places in heaven and hell. But the Lord did not allow me to see this appearance. So, hindi niya, kahit kausap niya ang Panginoon, hindi pa niya nakita yung countenance ng Panginoon. The angels first took me to three different places in heaven. In the first place, I saw little children living together. And the second place was where the adults live. And then the third place was where the souls had barely made it to heaven. Ibig sabihin, even though they made it to heaven, they had made it shamefully. So, may mga bata, tapos may mga adults, kasi kasi ang sabi ng lugar sa langit na yung mga aborted babies doon pa pinapalangin. So, meron place naman ng mga adults, tapos meron din lugar para sa mga kristyanong nakakahiga kung kaya sila napunta doon. Parang gano'n. Dahil, hindi ko nang ano, masabi, pero it can be mga buong buhay nila, hindi naman sila kasi pero yung last minute ng buhay nila, tumagap sila sa pangit, pwedeng gano'n yun. Wala silang nagawang kahit anong reward para sa Panginoon. Uh, many people have asked me how old the little ch- children were. They appeared like kindergartens. They were not the little boys or girls as we would know of gender. Each child had their own baby angel to accompany them. And then in heaven, most of the souls will have their own individual home. John 14.2, diba? Sabi ng Panginoon, uh, in my father's house of many mansions. And then, pero sabi nga ni Sado, kasi laki daw ng planeta kada bahay. Kada mansion. However, there were some who did not have homes. Ayan na, makikig kayo. Sabi dyan, oh, makikig kayo kung magkakaroon ba talaga ng planetang mansion. Kasi sabi dito, meron mga nakarating doon na wala silang bahay. However, there were some who did not have homes. I will explain this later. Moreover, the children did not have their own individual home either. So, I ask the children are all also souls, why do they not have their own homes? Ayun, ang sabi ng angel, just the people on earth require materials to build their homes. Yung time period na inalaw ng Panginoon sa atin na nandito sa mundo, at nakilala natin siya, nag-born again tayo, period of time naman yun para makapag-build ng kingdom ng Panginoon at equivalent yun sa mga rewards sa langit at materials para lumaki ng lumaki yung bahay natin sa langit. Ayan, so yun yung content nito. When a person serves the church and other, uh, others faithfully unto the Lord, those deeds will become materials for a person's home in heaven. So ayan nga, sabi nga sa mga mahilig mag-pray, sila rin yung mga pinakamalalaking mansion sa langit. When the materials are, are provided, the angels assigned to build a same soul will go to work on constructing it. The children who are below the accountability age, so, sabi na kung nag-rapture, di ba, yung mga batang, uh, ano yun, wala pa sa accountability age, rapture sila. Di ba ito? Merong, kasi sinatupunan ng nanay, rapture agad yun, so, mag-flat yung siyang ng buntis kapag nag-rapture. Kung hindi, believer yung nanay, ah, parang gano'n. Pero kung Christian na nung nanay at tapat na siya sa Panginoon, di ba? Tapos, nag-dabit ang tao siya. Paano yun sa dami, pwede siya? Hindi, pero hindi ko sa lalaman. Ako pinapunan. Hindi ko alam, pero basta, gano'n. 
no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can know what God has in store. And I continued with my questions. What shall I do on earth to provide more materials for my home? O, tanong niya rin ba yan para sa Panginoon? Na, Lord, ano bang mga dapat kong gawin para dumami yung materials ko para sa mansion ko sa langit? Yan, the angels replied, there are seven, o, ito naman itong makapasaduin natin. Yan, there are seven, seven things one must do to build up their materials to build their home. The first is their accumulation of worship and praise to God. Sino dito yung talagang totoong nagsasoping ka ng 12 hours or less than that, you know. Pero, bawa, doon yung kami to 3 hours lang. 2 hours, pero ikaw naman yung pure yung pure, di ba? Meron dito yung umiiyak pa lang sila, pero kami nakamove on sa buong araw, di ba? Yun, sa ganun. And then, uh, the second is their time spent reading the Bible. So, may sanabi si Dr. Olokoya na very hard talaga sila ng yung mga several months lang nila nagbabasa yung Bible. Kung magagali yung goal nila, di ba, na sa loob ng isang talk, ilang beses nila nagbabasa yung Bible. So, pangatlo, their time spent praying. Okay, so worship and praise, uh, Bible, prayer, for their time spent evangelizing to people. So, huwag tayong mag-rest sa mga past achievements. Kasi, marami, ito, nakakaroon na naman ang pasokad, di ba? Tapos, dadabi ulit yung magandang babae dito, no? Tapos, ewan na naman natin kung ano naman mamayari, no? So, may ganang story, ah. Pero, hindi yun yung pinapaalala ko sa inyo. Ito yung memorize natin. Uh, their time spent evangelizing to people. Uh, Pangapat yung evangelism and then pang lima, offering to the Lord. Offering. Obedience. Their obedience to tithes. Tithes na naman. Offering. Ayan. So, paano nga pupunta sa langit yung mga hindi nagka-tithes and offering, no? Ayan. Okay, so, tapos, lastly, their time spent serving the church in every way. So, ang pag-iisipin nyo dito, I do believe, kaya ito yung nire-require ng Panginoon. Because, Kapag yung isang tao talaga, babad siya sa salita ng Diyos, babad siya sa kanila, sa worship niya, sinusunod niya ang Panginoon, pangaral. Yung edi sa'yo parang very mindful of the Lord siya sa giving, ayan, sa tithes, at sa spending, yung spend niyang time na mga paglingkod inside the church, ganyan. Parang hanapin natin ito yung holiness and righteousness, pero yun pa rin, di ba? Seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Ibig sabihin, together with all of this na hinihiling sa atin ng Panginoon, we should live a holy life, diba? And then these are the deeds or works of obedience in which one accumulates materials for their heavenly home. If one is lacking in these areas, they will have no materials to build their home. There were numerous people in heaven without homes. Ayan. Kaya sinasabi nga dito, paalala, huwag kang pumunta sa langit na walang bahay. Many who did not have homes were actually pastors, deacons, deaconesses, uh, elders, etc. Hindi na niya ma-identify kung sa inyo sila ba yun. I asked out of curiosity, where do the children live then? The angels replied, they live here. As I look around, they were gathered throughout the garden of flowers. Pag walang bahay sa langit, nandun sa garden. Okay na ba? Okay na sa ito. Hindi ako satisfied ba, di ba? Gusto ko, meron ako bahay. So kung kayo, kung sa inyo garden lang, sige, magkasasok kayo sa panunuhay mo. Ayan, the garden of flowers, ayan, was so beautiful, and the fragrance was out of this world. The same was beyond what I could describe with my words. The second place was for faithful adults. There is a difference between salvation and their works. Uh, this place had so many homes. The homes were built with beautiful gems and are rare stones. Some of the homes were as high as the highest skyscrapers on earth. Yeah. So, langit yun, no? Tapos merong skyscraper. May sky, you know? Uh, so, imagine niyo yung langit may sky. So, sa langit pa may langit. Parang <laughs> gano'n. Um, so, those people who had faithfully served the Lord while living on earth had their homes built with beautiful gems and their souls. In this particular place, all the people look around the age of 20 to 30 years old. So, it was supernatural rejuvenation, wala pa handa. Yeah, there were no men or we... Oh, yeah. Ang daming komentaris. 
in a universe to gender. There are no seed, no over lady for. Ay, ay, naisip ko nung, nung anniversary pa. Girl, alam po may mga challenges ka na ka. Kaya lang ba yung wala na problema? Siyempre sa mga sagami, hindi ko wala na talo tayo problema doon. Pero sabi din ni Miles Monroe, I don't have problems. I have God's opportunities. Because sa, hindi, hindi tama yung word na pinagdadaan na. Diba? Parang ang tamang word, diba? I have God's opportunities para tulungan tayo ng Panginoon sa ano man yung mga dapat natin pagtalong tayo. And then, uh, I once knew an elderly O. Oh. O oh, at I'm yung, ako yung yung, O oh, in yung. He had died at the age of 65 years old. He was a very short man, as tall as second graders in elementary school. Ayan. Ano ba yun? Two feet? Ano ba? Di ba lang? Ano? Three? Three feet? Uh, he had suffered from a rare disease called rickets. However, when he came to the Bible, he was a PhD. Oh, come on, di ba? Yeah, so he had written many commentaries. I met him in heaven, and there was tall, and he was tall, and <laughs> he was tall and handsome. He was no longer sick, but tall. Heaven is... Sorry, kung ako makuti mga tao dun yun. wonderful place. I am so full of expectations. Please believe what I am saying, beloved people. The third place, oh, ito na. Kaya na ako basta dito. The third place, the third place, Serve. 
there was no sacrifice and servitude on his part. This particular pastor was greatly honored in Korea and is an icon within the Korean Christian history, but he had no reward. Yeah, so how sad, di ba? That you pastor out there, please be sad. You have to lead people to more than just Sunday morning services. You must visit them in their home. You must take care of the poor, the lame, and old. The pastors who have served without sacrificing their lives and love to be honored have no reward in heaven. After I had witnessed this thing in heaven and after I had come back to the earth, I immediately gave all of my possessions. Dapat nanik na in including my father, I had actually details. Our life is but a moment. In the, in the Bible, the average life is about 70 to 8 years old, but it is only God who knows when a person will die. Anyone can die before the age of 70 or 80. Ayan nga, si Mama, 56 years old lang siya nung umibig siya sa Panginoon. Ayun, so, move on. I had, so, I had decided to give everything away, even my clothes. The people I saw had received salvation and shame. They were pastors, elders, deacons, and lay believers. There were a um, multitude of elders and deacons in this flat shabby home. But of course, it is much better than hell. However, why would anyone want to enter heaven in such a way? Bakit nga ba? Diba? Lalo nang alam natin ito, bakit gusto pa ng mga, gusto pa ng tao na gano'n? Diba? So, in this again, something better than that. Yan, I will not end up in that shameful place. Sabi natin, I will not end up in the shameful place. Yan, they're closer even siya. Pero, ang aim natin, di ba, yung talagang original intention na mansion sa akin ng Panginoon, in Jesus' name yun. What are the requirements for Christians to receive such beautiful homes in heaven? First, we have to evangelize to as many people as possible. How should we evangelize? The angel told me, assume there is an unbeliever who does not know the Lord. The moment you decide to evangelize to that particular person, the building materials for your homes will be provided. Well, so, ayun, napaka, ano nun, importante, di ba, na hindi na, hanggang pakita natin ang Panginoon ng buka, di ba, hindi ka na-stop tayo sa evangelism. And also, uh, told yung mga care group na kinuturoan ko ngayon na ang ito pray na natin, millions of souls to be saved. Ayan, assume there is an, an uh, as you are seizing, we pray for their salvation. Ayan, hindi ka lang mag-evangelize, but you should pray without ceasing para sa kaligtasan nila and more building materials are provided. So evangelism and intercession of dapat. You must continue to check up on them, visiting them, and continue your evangelizing. This will add more materials to your home. If a person says he, she cannot make it to church because they do not have nice clothes, wala mo kumasahid, bigyan yan, then you must provide them with some, uh, and then if the person says he, she does not have a Bible, you must provide one. If a person says he, she does not have glasses to read, you must, bigyan niya na pang-tank lens. So you must provide whatever you are able to so this person can be led to the Lord. Those who live in the best homes are those who have evangelized many times. Sabi nga, sa langit, ang nakita nila parang sa tallest tower, Tapos nakalista yung pangalan, si Billy Graham yung nakita nilang nasa top one. The angel then escorted me to the place where the saints live in nice homes. This is where saints who had evangelized much be. It felt like downtown heaven. In Christian history, there are four people who have the biggest and most beautiful homes. The angel showed me the home of American evangelist, D.L. Moody. Eh kasi nung time na wala pa nang sigla, diba? Si Billy Graham, British Pastor John Wesley, an Italian evangelist, and Korean evangelist Pastor Choi Gunung. These four people have the largest homes in heaven. These four have spent their whole lives evangelizing the people, either through up to the time of their death. Uh, within the Korean believers, there was a lay believer who had a large home. This lay believer had built many church buildings with his, uh, all his possessions. He had given 3,000 bags of rice to the poor. He secretly, secretly helped thousands of pastors and leaders with their finance. He helped students study theology or in Bible school with their tuitions. He had also taken in a pastor uh, into his home and took good care of him. His own, 
Merong pastor na ilabag na pinalis ng sarili niyang church tapos siya yung nag- nangalaga. I heard an angel shout. Ayan, the materials are coming. I questioned the angel to my right about the materials and the gold. These materials are for a deaconess from a small church who is from the country. In fact, she receives materials every day. Even though she is poor, um, she comes to earth. Yeah, tingnan niyo to ah. She comes to early morning service each day. She prays for 87 church members daily. When she finishes praying, she cleans up the church. I heard another angel shout, special delivery. The daughter of the deaconess had given what little money she had to her mother. However, the deaconess did not spend it on herself. She bought five eggs and two pairs of socks for the church pastor. Even though it may appear to be a small offering, she had given all she had for the day. This became special materials for her home in heaven. So I am little becomes much as we place them in the message. I dream I went to heaven. Thank you for giving to them. Second, uh, second uh, those who also have a uh, large show are those who have built church buildings or other buildings for kingdom purpose with their possessions and resources. So, parang ganito nga yung sa Axe Church, di ba? Lahat ng possession nila pinibigay na para mag-build ang church in heaven. I also met an elder named Choi among all the Korean elders and deacons who are in heaven. Dami namang, ang dami ng Korean sa langit na. Abi, doon ba naman ang Korean sa langit? Ay, Jesus. We had, we had the most beautiful home. His home was much higher than the tallest building in Korea. And Olet, his home was much higher than the tallest building in Korea. Yeah. So I had built many churches in Korea with his love. I asked the angel, how about my house? Is, uh, is it in the process of being built? And the angel said, yes, it is. Okay. I beg to see my house. But they told me it was not allowed. I continued to beg, and after some persistent begging, the angel said that the Lord will now allow me. Yeah. We entered the chariot and traveled very far to another place. I was full of expectation. I asked, where is my house? And the angel replied, is it over there? But it looked as though the place was only a foundation. <laughs> yeah, only ready for development. I cried out, how could you do this to me? How could this be happening? How could my house be in a developing zone? Surviving the Korean War, eto na, binida na niya sa lahat ng ginawa niya. Surviving the Korean War, I sold my only home to build a church. This church eventually grew to 5,000 members. I wrote many books inspired by the Holy Spirit. One book became a bestseller with the proceeds from the books. I built Christian schools. The school birth 240 pastors during tenure as the dean. I had given out over 400 scholarships to over 400 poor children. Ang dami namang nagawa, no? So I have built homes for the widows to live in. This all costs huge amounts of money, so how could this be? Why is my home in a land development? I am so upset. So may hindi pa tayo sa ang dami yung pinag-ano. Akala niyang nagawa niya. Yes, the angel replied sternly. You do not deserve to live in such a beautiful, nice home in heaven because you have been honored by people countless times. Amen. Kaya mag-ingat tayo sa mga kinokolage tayo tapos ito yung ginawa sa akin ito. Ayan, nakakatapot yun. Sabotage ng reward yun. So, every time you had built for God something good, you were praised by people. You were even honored by the secular news. And therefore, all your works are in vain. Matthew 6, 1. I look at my home in the development zone. I was, uh, it was located in the middle of three other homes. It only had three stories. The house had many small rooms on the first two floors. I asked the angel, why do I have such small rooms? The angel answered, these rooms are for your sons and daughters. Uh, I only have four children. I replied, the angel responded, no, they are not for your earth, early children, but for the ones you have evangelized and are saved. I love it. I asked, where is my master bedroom? The angel said that it was on the roof that bothered me. My room was not even finished. 
in an angry tone, I said, it is so small, why is it so difficult to finish? The angel replied, you are not even dead. Kaya sabi, hindi ka pagkataya, we cannot finish your home or rooms because you do not know if more materials will be provided. Kaya, do you understand? So, ayun, meron pa siyang time para dumami yung materials na sa dahil. When we entered, uh, when we entered my room, I saw two certificates uh, hanging on my wall. I don't know. So I went to read them. The first certificate described when I was 18 years old, living in an orphanage. On Christmas Day, I was on my way back to the early morning church service. I had seen an elderly man shivering on the street. I took my jacket off and gave it to him. That he had given me a reward in heaven. So, meron siyang dalawang recognition sa langit na sa certificate ko. Ayan. So, isa na dahil nagbigay siya ng jacket. At yung pangalawa, the second certificate described the same incident, but it was for buying some bread with the little money I had for the elderly man. The amount is not the issue. The act must be accompanied by genuine faith. The dollar amount has no significance. So, ayan. Yung mga secret things na ginawa natin para sa Panginoon, ayun yung may mga certificates na namin. We left the place and headed back out. During the ride, one of the angels asked, Are you sad? I will tell you how to have a beautiful home built. The Lord said, When you go back to the earth, you must go to tell the people about heaven and hell, as you have witnessed. Second, uh, the Lord desires you to build a place to gather elderly female pastors and evangelists who do not have places to go or leave. If you truly faithfully do these things, you will have a beautiful home. At ano nga, ito ko sa Iperno. Then the two angels escorted me to hell and they said, Now you will visit hell. You have no idea the enormity of hell. Then, uh, uh, sabi niya, it is so big, yan so big. Tapos kaya nang niya, bakit yung Iperno, dalawang kulay, isang part red, tapos isa dark black. Dark black, ayan, so... And so the angels replied, do you not know it is burning sulfur? The other half is darkness. When people sin and end up here, they will be tormented from both sides. There are multitudes of churches on the earth, and many of the churches are filled with many people. However, most of them are not true Christians. They are but church attendants. The true churches will, will firmly believe in heaven and a hell. The lives of many Christians are in chaos because they do not firmly believe in heaven and God. When one soul enters heaven, one thousand cursed souls enter hell. The rate of heaven and hell is one to one thousand. So, kada isang, parang ganyan yung sinasabi niya, yung ratio, na kada isang pumapasok sa langit, one thousand na agad, yung napunta sa impyano. Kaya, yung sinasabi, ang purpose ng message na to ay, um, Kumonti yung pupunta sa impyerno at dumaba yung pupunta sa namin. I am a Presbyterian pastor and a well-known speaker. I have graduated from one of the largest theological schools in Korea. I never believed those heaven and hell stories, but now I am one who writes such experiences to testify to others, although you may believe you are a Christian. I am so ito, in Jesus' name, di ba? Na, well, Wag lum, sabi dyan, wag magbuhay, di ba? According to the will of demons. Because they will end up in hell. The first place, yan. Ang nakita niya ay yung burning sulfur. And then, sabi niya yung there is intense heat. People in hell say uh, three statements, yan. Too hot. Uh, they feel like dying. Pangalawa, they are thirsty and feel like dying. At pangatlo, uh, humihiling sila ng tubig. It is eternal. Many people say we are free in Christ and they live their lives as they desire. I asked the angel, those who are in here, what have they done? The angel answered, the first group is unbelievers. Those who have not evangelized to their own family must repent. Ayan. So, ganun yung katinda, di ba? Na uh, kinakailangan talaga ng, ang role natin kung bakit tayo nagre-represent ng uh, nakaligtasan ng Panginoon para yung mga family members na hindi pa nakakilala sa Panginoon ay madala natin sa Panginoon. The angel continued, um, the second group is those who believe in Jesus but did not repent of their sins. We must repent of our sins and must confess to the Lord. We must not sin, just giving lip service is not repenting. With a contrite and earnest heart, we must repent. Christians in hell. I then saw many pastors, elders, and deacons in hell. I asked the angel, I know them. 
They had served God faithfully while on the earth. They had died some time ago. We all had thought they were in heaven with God. Kaya sabi, ang nasa isip daw niya, kasi kilala niya yung mga makita daw, ang, ang nasa isip niya, nasa langit sila. Kaya niya yung sinasabi ko, but now I see them all in hell and they are crying out, that is so bad. They are, why are they here? There were so many pastors, others, because and all other slave believers. The angel answered, uh, Pastor Pang, a part young view, a person can appear to be a true follower of Christ from the outside, but God knows the heart. Yeah, so they did not keep Sundays holy. Ayan. Ganon ka-precious ang Sunday na keep the Sabbath day holy. In fact, they had loved to make money on Sundays. Many of the deacons and elders had criticized the ceremony of their pastors. They did not, uh, they did not tithe properly. So, minanakawan ang Panginoon, kaya nasa internet din. They did not pray. They had not evangelized to people at all. Many of these elders and deacons had harassed their pastors and would come against their authority. They had interfered with the pastor's duty and business. Number 16. Um, and then on their deathbeds, they thought they had done a good job so they did not repent of those things. This is why they were thrown in the fires of hell. I then saw a king and a prince who were, had first persecuted Christians in Korea. This king and prince beheaded many of the first believers in Korea. They were, play, uh, they were placed in the center, which was the hottest place of all. I saw Hitler, Stalin, and a famous pastor from North Korea named Pastor Kang and a famous Japanese hero and many more. That we arrived at an extremely dark place to dark to see, too dark to see where to stand. I shouted, Angels, angels, it is so dark. How can I see any how can I see anything? The angels patted my shoulder and said, just wait a little bit. Within a few moments, I was able to see countless numbers of naked people. All of them had insects crawling all over their bodies. Not an inch was spared as their whole bodies were completely covered with insects. And the naked people attempted to drive the insects away, smashing their feet. I asked, what did these people do as they live on earth? They are those who have criticized and backstabbed each other. They were not careful of what they had said to one another. And then, yeah, Matthew 5, 22, I saw the demons piercing and stabbing the stomachs of the people with sickles. Their screams were unbearable to me. I asked my desert angels, what did these people do as they had lived on earth? These people had jobs, houses, and families, but they did not give to God. They did not help the poor in their churches or other uh, godly purposes. They were very stingy and greedy, koripot uh, and gahaman. Even as they encountered the poor, they ignored them and did not care. They only cared for themselves and their families. They were well clothed, fed, and had a comfortable life. This is why their stomachs are pierced, for their bellies are full of greed. Proverbs 28 and 7. It was a very frightening scene. After witnessing such a scene, when I got back to the earth, I gave all of my money and possessions to others. Salvation cannot be earned with money or property. This by faith. Hell is an unbearable and miserable place. It is eternal torment. I also saw people who had their heads hung off by a very sharp saw. I asked the angel, what did these people do to deserve such awful torment? The angel replied, their brains were given by God to think good, beneficial things, but these people had thoughts of filthy things. They thought of lustful things. Matthew 5, 28. So, ayun guys, sabi nga sa langit, yung mga naiisip natin, megaphone sa Panginoon. So, kada naiisip, di ba? Loud na narinig ng Panginoon. Next, I saw people being stabbed and cut into pieces. The sight was horrible. I asked, what about these people? What did they do to be tormented in such a way? The angel replied, These were elders and deacons who did not serve their churches. In fact, they did not even want to work or serve. The, the only thing they had loved were to receive and receive from the flock. And then I saw the elders, deacons, and other lay believers tormented by the demons. The demons made a hole in their tongues and placed wires through the tongues of one another. Then the demons dragged the people with the war 
I asked again, what did they do on earth? The angel answered, they had committed four types, uh, four different types of sins. First, they had criticized their pastors. They would speak negative things about their pastors. They were backbiting and ridiculing their pastors. James 3, 6 and Matthew 4, 37. Diba, sa out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speak. Kaya, mas nabi nga na, yung uh, kada tao, diba, they will be held accountable sa bawat salita. Sinabi nila, I plead with those who have committed such acts to repent. Repent. The angel continued, second, they insulted the church with their words. They have had us other Christians to the point where even the faithful ones were affected and they stopped attending church and even caused some to stop believing. Kaya, ayan, napakadelikado ng pagtitisol. Yeah, they, did all, uh, they did all they could do uh, could to stop faithful Christians from doing God's work. These wicked ones caused many faithful to stumble. Lastly, there are spouses who drank alcohol and were abusive to their family members. I saw demons piercing men and women in their stomachs with a very huge sharp nail. I asked, what did they do? The angel replied, these are men and women who have lived with one another but were not married. Ayan, ito na yung sinasabing uh, fornication o yung premarital sex, di ba? Uh, these are men and women who have lived with one another but were not married. Ay, uh, mga live-in. Uh, and these are guilty of abortions as they also got pregnant. They had never repented. I saw another group of people. The demons were slicing their lips as if one thing is slicing meat or vegetables. I asked, why are these people tormented in such a way? The angel said, these are sons, daughters, son-in-laws, and daughter-in-laws who have talked back to their parents. All they had to do was say, I'm sorry. Instead of making things worse, many of them had used abusive language. They had attacked their parents with harsh language. They were rebellious. This is why their lips are being sliced. Brethren, we are all going to die one day, but we don't know when that will be. Please be prepared. Being prepared is to go to heaven. When we go, it's not the issue. Please forgive each other as frequently and quick to repent and quick to forgive as necessary if you need to repent and repent and do it all day long if you have to. My beloved brethren, I used to ignore such testimonies. I was a conservative presbyterian pastor who ignored such things. But now I must witness and testify to you what I have seen. Please do not hesitate to live a holy life. Please avoid this miserable torment and judgment. Be saved. Do not live for your flesh, but submit to the kingdom of God. Please pray for those who do not know Jesus. Evangelize and bear fruit. Please pray early in the morning and keep Sundays holy. Please tie to the Lord properly. Accumulate your rewards in heaven and not in this earth. I pray and bless you in the almighty name of Jesus. So, uh, I am, do not again by Pastor Park Youngview. And I am at 7 p.m. now. But then, I, I want to let you know that Jesus Christ is our Jehovah Seed Kenny. Yeah, babalikan natin yung pinaka-message natin na sa lahat ng ito, di ba? Para maiiwas tayo doon sa lahat ng mga pagkakamali ngayon. Uh, sabi sa Psalm 11, 7, For the righteous Lord loves righteousness, His countenance that behold the upright. In John 17, 16, 17, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Kaya, Huwag tayong pabuhay na katulad ng mundo. Sanctify them to truly prove thy word is true. And then Jeremiah 25, uh, 23 verses 5 to 6. Behold, the days come, say the Lord, that I will raise up unto thee with a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In these days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Ephesians 5, 9, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Psalm 17, 15, As for me, I will behold my face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I obey with a likeness. He was called for me, Follow peace with all men and holiness, which without, which no man shall see the Lord. So, napakalaga nito, na kung gusto namin makita ang mukha ng Panginoon, ay pabuhan tayo sa kabanala niya. John 17, 25, O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. 
and this song you know that thou has sent me. I want to share a song. Itong mata na to. Kagabi, kagabi kasi mag-iisip mo, Lord, ano bang tangkay yung tungkol sa righteousness? And you can bear with me na despite of kami ay mga Christian kids, may mga Christian parents, we are a Christian family, but meron talaga ng point ng buhay na sa kamulang dalalaman na, oo, ito na pala yung Christian na pala dalalaman ako. 